I struggle, as Serena said. Sometimes I eat a bit of fish or occasionally some meat. You don't have to be 100% vegan to get the benefits. You try to ship things as best you can. If you're just eating meat, you get high levels of these branched chain amino acids, which might initially make you feel great, but in the long run, you don't want to have them always in your system. Dr. David Sinclair is a professor of genetics at Harvard and the author of the best-selling book Lifespan, Why We Age and Why We Don't Have To. His research focuses on understanding the molecular and genetic mechanisms that drive aging with a goal of extending healthy human lifespan. Protein is essential for muscle synthesis, repair, and overall cellular function. However, the quality and source of protein matter greatly. Here are some high protein foods that are recommended by Dr. David Sinclair for optimal health and longevity. I'm not saying limit protein intake at all. I get plenty of protein, um, just mostly from plant-based sources where there's not a lot of the branch chain amino acids. Those leucine, isoleucine, valine amino acids are the ones that activate mTOR. Um, and so, yeah, focus on plants. You'll have enough protein to build muscle. I have no, no trouble building muscle. Um, <laughs> That, that it's a fallacy that you need to be eating you know these protein shakes and meat to get stronger and to build muscle now if you want to professionally build muscle by all means go for it but for most of us who just want to feel good look good live longer um, what i'm recommending doesn't affect your ability to do those things and, and build up muscle one bit and there's it's also a fallacy that older people cannot build up muscle my father who's 82 uh, had built up a lot of muscle he goes to the gym twice a week he runs he hikes and he literally is stronger than me um and he says he hasn't felt this good since he was in his 30s though he, he does say that he probably felt like crap when he was 30. i'm not going to say my father and i are a clinical trial um, in fact we were just doing this mainly because we're scientists we can read the literature we're researching it um but it's a fun experiment right we've now been doing this long enough that something weird is going on. My dad feels like and acts like he's 30 and I, I don't act or hopefully you can judge, look like I'm 52. He's 82. So that's pretty interesting. We'll see over the next 10, 20 years what happens. But he he's not a special person when it comes to life. He He's an average guy. He didn't like exercise. He was not looking forward to the future. Uh, he's not obsessed with his health at all. And look at what happened. I mean, you know, he's living a life that he didn't expect at all. A lot of people want to know about how do they get protein if they're not going to eat a lot of meat? They least I'm intermittent vegan. How do we get the right amount of amino acids? And before you answer, I want to just quickly say one of the reasons for focusing on plants, besides getting the wonderful polyphenols and uh, molecules from those plants, and we like to eat stressed, colorful plants. Another reason for having plants is that the ratio of amino acids uh, is beneficial, we think, for longevity based on the research. And uh, if you're just eating meat, you get high levels of these branched chain amino acids, which might initially make you feel great, but in the long run, you don't want to have them always in your system. So I think one of the tricks that people don't realize is that you can get the amount of proteins that you need from plant-based sources, and it's actually good to kind of combine them. So. There's legumes. We are very regular about how much chickpeas, you know, we eat chickpeas and lentils and different types of legumes on a very regular basis. They're extremely high in plant protein and also plant fiber. Um, sometimes people are concerned about the carbs, but there's so much fiber in this type of food. It balances it out. Your net carbs are actually a lot lower than what you think. And what people also don't realize is you can overcook your plant protein source and then that lowers the amount of proteins that you're actually getting. So your cooking method can actually affect the amount of protein you're getting from your from you know a plant-based diet. So as long as you're a little bit mindful about that, just not, you know, not overcooking. Um, even boiling can reduce the amount of protein that you're getting. You know, roasting, steaming, of course, has less of an impact on the amount of protein. So that's a really that those are small little mindful changes that can really impact your um, your diet if you are staying plant-based uh, to you know, build muscle or to work out or however you so choose. Just that one little tweak can make a really big difference in the amount of protein that you're getting. 
Yeah, you know, I, I think that some people can't live without meat. And I think it's good to emphasize that you do what you can, right? With the movement, you do what you can. With your diet, you do what you can. You don't have to be 100% vegan to get the benefits. You try to shift things as best you can. And yep. I struggle, as Serena said. Sometimes I eat a bit of fish or occasionally some meat. Um, occasionally I have alcohol. I don't want to restrict myself completely. Uh, but I do do my best to focus on the foods that are healthy. Well, let, let's start with exercise in general. What is a good exercise regime? I think we generally agree on this. Uh, we read the scientific literature every day. And what it says in general is uh, a little bit goes a long way. So if your exercise is running a few miles a day, that's great. If you don't want to do that, if you don't like it, you can do something else. Yeah. You can do yoga, you can get a standing desk and walk upstairs. Uh, you can do some sit-ups, you can lift weights at the gym. And so I would love to do more. So going back to what I used to do, I used to work out at least one time a week, which was intense. It was for two hours at the gym or at my house. I like to do it every other day, mixing it up, upper body, lower body. Uh, what we tell clients is to, to make sure not to forget your back and hips um, and, and upper thighs because for longevity, which is what we're here to talk about, that's crucial. As you get older, you're losing a lot of mass. In fact, uh, particularly males after uh, the age of 40, they're losing it uh, one or two percent a year. Um, but women, so they uh, also lose testosterone. And one of the the most dangerous things to do is to lose muscle mass in your hips because I think we all know of people or even on our family members who have fallen over when they're older and broken a hip or broken a femur. And that's a really fast way to ending your life because if you're frail and old, you often don't recover from that. The point really is move. You've got to move. If you want to live a long time, you have to move. Walking is great for maintaining those hips and lower back. You'll feel better. You'll have a bit bigger spring in your step. When I did a lot of weights, I not just looked better, but actually felt so much better. Um, I felt like I was walking on air. Um, and uh, that wasn't just because I bought new shoes. It was because the muscles in my legs were good. At, and for men and women to maintain hormone levels, particularly testosterone, yes. you want to maintain that muscle mass. Your leg muscles, your back muscles, these big muscles, they will signal to your genitals to produce an adrenal system to produce these hormones. Yes. And that's one of the best, possibly the best way to maintain your hormone levels as you get older. When should you take supplements? When should you exercise? When should you eat? So that your body has time to think that it's in adversity. So you might want to be hungry and not taking um, uh, or not taking these amino acid supplements and creatine and potentially not even taking metformin. So your body starts to turn on longevity responses, dampening inflammation, repairing DNA, lengthening telomeres, giving you that longevity effect so you stay young. And then on certain days, you can do the opposite. You can work out not take these uh, supplements and build up muscle. And that's uh, that's really the way the scientific literature is saying that we should do our lifestyles to maximize longevity, but also to also um, make sure we don't lose muscle mass as we get older. I, I wanted to address supplements really quick when it comes to being plant-based, especially if you are working out and you're trying to build muscle. So for those who have asked, and I've seen it a lot, yes, you will likely need to supplement uh, B12 uh, and iron, and now that's dependent on your body. So you get your measurements done, do what David says all the time, which is, you know, get your blood work done, see what your levels are. And if you shift into a more plant-focused diet, see if it changes. You know, I don't, I don't need to take those supplements all the time. Every once in a while I do, everybody is a little bit different. But your omegas, make sure you're taking omegas. If you're not getting it from your foods, that would be a lot of seeds you know if you're doing your flaxseed oils and your chia seeds on a really regular basis then you might be getting your omegas um, enough of your omegas if not then you supplement and of course vitamin d it's got yeah. K k2 and other things in it everyone should be on k2 i think it's a really great vitamin as well as d 